So welcome to another Scottish Watches video. Again, we have something a little bit extreme, out of the ordinary and different for you guys. You may have heard of a company called HYT but maybe not seen their watches. I was lucky enough to see just a couple of their watches before when I've been over in Switzerland but we have got Pietro from Limited Edition from Englandshire up with us again and he is going to explain about this watch and why it is so unique. Hi Rick, nice to be here. How are you? Good to have you back. So tell us about this watch. What's the story with HYT? So HYT is um, one of the brands that has truly inspired us uh, in our uh, journey uh, to promote independent watchmaking. So it's one of the newest brands as well. Uh, not many know that uh, HYT was established in 2011 only after a 10 years journey to develop this extreme uh, time telling technology which I will tell you everything about. And um, yes, it's one of the brands that I couldn't believe when I set up the limited edition, the online uh, official platform for independent watchmaking. I couldn't believe HYT was not available at all in, uh, in, uh, in the UK. So we became official retailers for HYT and also agents uh, to try to spread the word around uh, because HYT is a success in other parts of the world. Yeah. And uh, we've been blessed in the last three years. We really managed to establish a little bit the brand. Excellent. Now, the, th the thing that stands out the most, obviously, is this doesn't look like a normal mechanical watch. So can you explain a little bit about what makes HYT different? Yes, absolutely. One of the things that makes me so passionate about independent watchmaking is that time is only an accessory. Uh, time telling is not necessarily the main thing. Uh, but yes, on these uh, uh, incredible pieces, you can read the time yeah. in a very, very alternative way. Uh, you may remember that the first way to uh, tell the time, to read and measure the time, was through clepsydras in, uh, in the time of the ancient Greeks. Before my time, Rick would know about that. It was me. slightly before your, and even my time actually, for <laughs> as old as I am. Um, so clepsydras were tools apt to measure how much of your day was gone and how much of your day was left. Okay. So time telling had then of course become a thing uh, to be measured by hands. Yes. Uh, basically. So HYT comes back to this ancest ancestral uh, meaning of time by using the most incredible technology. Uh, as you can see, the time is told by this capillary that goes all the way around. Mm -hmm powered by two pistons, we can call them. We can call them bellows as well, mechanical be bellows, which, which right. are NASA made. And these bellows, they both contain one liquid of a different color. So the left bellow will contain the green liquid, the right bellow will contain the transparent liquid. I thought that was air. I didn't realize it was two liquids in there, in there the are, chamber. There are two liquids. So once the liquids are pressed together, they will meet in a certain point okay. of the capillary, and that will be your time. So in this case, you can see that the, the green goes all the way to 8, uh -huh. and the minute hand is showing you that it's 20 past 8. Okay. But the, besides being, ready, being able sorry, to technically read the time, what is, this watch is showing you is how much of your day is gone, green part, mm -hmm. and how much of your day is still there to be seized. And even more so, the green is your past, and the transparent part is your immediate future. It hasn't been created yet. Ah. So, as I said, we'll, when we'll turn the watch, we'll see how much of this ancestral and basic concept has mm -hmm. been elaborated in, in modern days by HYT. Well, let's using... not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Yes, you know, We'll keep something for later on. Absolutely. So tell us that, that, a little bit more about the history of you and HYT. How did you become agents for them because if they're all over the world and they're open in the UK why why you why yes. why did you decide on this yeah so I've been um, in the business for the last 20 years uh, right. in, uh, in in watchmaking directly or indirectly and as I developed my passion for the independence in particular uh, I always follow up on uh, new projects and new independence that perhaps when I think about them have they have not had the, the success that, uh, you know, uh, most would expect. And with HYT, that was the time when the brand had just been established. It mm -hmm. was being successful in certain parts of the world, but it was completely a, a raw diamond as far as Europe and the UK was uh, concerned. 
so when I visited the manufacturing and I appreciate what was behind the brand and the level of uh, the level of how they have re- revolutionized some concepts of watchmaking, yeah. I got absolutely hooked. And uh, yeah, they were obviously kind enough to appreciate the work that we've we've been doing with other brands like. Uh, uh, Chaikin, uh, like uh, Chapek, like uh, Graham Watches, like uh, uh, all the brands that we have on mm-hmm. the platform as official retailers, and they decided to develop these markets with uh, with us. Which model is this one here we're looking at? So we're looking at the H0, which mm-hmm. is the most streamlined version of an HYT. Okay. Uh, this model w- was launched uh, five years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And this green version is one of the best sellers uh, in, the, in the collection. The fact that it's been streamla- streamlined and, uh, and uh, stripped off the case itself mm-hmm. gives absolute highlight to the technology of the capillary itself. Uh, there are a lot of details that are absolutely unbelievable in terms of the composition of the liquids that are pushed across the capillary, the capillary itself, and the mechanical movements behind, which is powering the whole system. Well, we do need to rotate the watch now to explain that this isn't just a a clear bezel. This is the watch itself. So if I start to turn that round, you will begin to see... Just move that box out of the way. You can see the, the side right the way through. And then if we fully rotate, which is what you wanted me to do to show everybody, you get to see what goes on in there. Absolutely, so there are two elements. One is the pure mechanical element of the movement. Uh, The mechanics are developed uh, by HYT in collaborations with independent watchmakers that make the calibers uh, uh, on purpose for this kind of technology. Yeah. So your mechanical movement is squeezed to the top, as you can see here. This is oh, a yeah. yes, absolutely to be able to house the two bellows and the two reservoirs. Uh, now the reservoirs are made in America and they are supplied by NASA because they have <laughs> they need to have some special uh, uh, characteristics. So uh, hold on a minute, right? Yeah, Omega like to talk about moon watches and space yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't think they've actually got any NASA tech inside, and this does. Wow, Um, right, okay, carry on. There are some some incredible um, uh, highlights. I mean, the liquid itself is so special that can only be housed by a a specific kind of metal in these bellows that can actually maximize the performance of then the liquid squeezing across the capillary. The mechanical movement for as special as it is, it just does one thing, is to give the impulse uh, to the bellows. Themselves. Right. So the orological accuracy comes from the movement, is transferred to the bellows, and the bellows will then squeeze, use that energy to squeeze the liquid across the capillary. And because of the, the um, how can I say, the, um, uh, the level of danger to be inaccurate, being very high when you are trying to tell the time with liquids. So mm-hmm. every mechanical orological inaccuracy will be amplified by the liquid. So uh, if the movement was slightly inaccurate, then the liquid will move uh, uh, much faster or much slower on the capillary itself. So out of a a, a normal normal, um, uh, accuracy level uh, or out of an of a, of a, how can I say, um, acceptable inaccuracy, you'll Mm -hmm. have a much greater uh, mistake on telling in telling the time on the dial itself of course so the level of accuracy that has to be achieved is actually superior to fine watchmaking uh, it would have to be such. Yeah. and how does temperature affect the fluid yeah so now we're entering a big uh, topic because the fluid is actually the second most expensive fluid on earth even more than inkjet printer fluid is <laughs> I amazing? I, I had to double check that. <laughs> I had to double check, but it seems that it's, there's only one liquid that is more expensive, and that's um, scorpion's venom, which is used in uh, medicine. Um, right. Um, so this liquid has been uh, it's a secret recipe. How much and is it? It's actually when they worked out the first liquids, mm-hmm. that the investment was in the region of one, uh, sorry, eleven million dollars per liter. Whoa. So, of course, in the watch, there is a fraction of a liter. 
uh, but still they reckon there is the equivalent of five thousand dollars only of liquid itself so these two liquids of course you ask the right question how how are the liquids impacted by temperature by shocks mm. how can they meet in a certain point of the capillary and not mix yeah how can you wear them you know for sports activities and not getting everything mixed yeah, up shaking things. together yeah Espe these liquids have special special characteristics making them completely and you know uh, shock proof temperature uh, proof and um and you know keep the accuracy that is required to be able to tell the time in a in mm -hmm. a particular way can we see it in action absolutely so think for a second that as i said the green liquid is your past and the transparent liquid is your future yeah as the day goes by you are set let's say as a uh, standard how can i say uh, look uh, at that go <laughs> yes you can see the liquid going and normally we are set on two cycles of 12 hours in our in our life if you suppose that you wake up around about six o'clock in the morning yeah. you have your working day that goes for 12 hours more or less until six o'clock in the evening yeah and as you approach six o'clock here you can see time is flying it has indeed yeah in the form of liquid so it's three o'clock now it's four o'clock now it's five o'clock and what happens because here we are on a cycle of 12 hours yeah what about the next 12 hours of our, of our, our day a piece of absolute mechanical brilliance completes this watch and is a a retrograde system mm -hmm. allowing the watch when he, exactly when the time hits six in the evening to go back to square one so <sighs> This bell on the left is now working in the opposite direction as it was doing before. It was squeezing before and now it's yeah. easing to allow the transparent liquid to push the green back to square one. As you can see, it's magic. That and it takes is nuts. Less than a minute to go back to square one. Now, let's just confirm a few things here. There's no battery. No battery. There is no sure. electrical motor, no electrical pump. Everything is driven by a mechanical watch movement. Absolutely. The watch movement is giving the impulse to those two bellows. And these two bellows are running the show. Uh, it may also help understanding. And in one of the bellows, there is also a special system called a thermal compensator, mm -hmm. which is able, if you live in Dubai or if you live in Glasgow, <laughs> to keep <laughs> the temperature at that nice level where... Uh, the liquids are happy to function and to run absolutely undisturbed. Yeah. And then second part of your day, it will start again. And then it's six o'clock, going to seven, et cetera, et cetera. But really the idea was to get, you know how independent watchmaking, it's an artistic interpretation of how we like to tell the time. Yeah. Uh, time telling is dominated by the system that we have created with the two hands showing us hours and minutes which if you show to a child, it will, it will have no clue why that is, because it has no connection yes. with nature. Well, I even heard in certain schools, I don't know if it's across the board, they're not showing analog clocks anymore because people can't understand, or kids can't understand how to read the time. That's a very good point. You know, also in our digital world, uh, all the charging bars, loading bars, mm -hmm. Even True. even in the car dashboard now, in, in you know, some, some of the well, car's dashboard. Like an hourglass. The passage of Com time was completely, sand. Yeah, yeah, completely. So a clepsydra and hourglass is what the ancient Greeks used to tell how much time I used, how much time is there to be used. And we have lost that. At the time it was made to understand how much you would stay, you know, in the fields to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to carry out your work. But in these days, obviously, we have completely lost that touch. So the philosophy of HYT is to go back to square one in, in the interpretation of time, yeah. but to use the ultimate technology in order to achieve that. No, that's fantastic. Uh, right, okay, the burning desire question is, how much are these guys? Yes, yeah, so this, uh, uh, the H0 is on a starting level of 36,000 pounds, mm -hmm. including VAT. And then they go, uh, uh, as the range develops, they go up to 100,000, more wow. or less. And then there are some yeah. special series the h3 with the linear power reserve and those are exceptional pieces that go over two hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh, pounds um, there are also very philosophical pieces like the skull uh, which will uh, 
uh, we'll introduce. Uh, if only we had one that we could... Uh, that would be good, wouldn't it'd it? It would be really good if we, we had one that we could show off a little bit. But uh, oh, <laughs> Here, Here it is. Go. So the skull is the amplified version of this philosophy we've talked about. Okay. Of understanding how much time we have, how much is left, and actually ultimately making the most of the time we have. Yeah. And focusing on the now rather than focusing too much on mm -hmm. what has happened or we think is going to happen. Can you see here that the past is in green and the future is in uh, is transparent? Yeah. So if you if you if you uh, elaborate philosophically, uh, it looks like the vision of the future is slightly bleaker than the vision of the past. Mm. So yeah. in, in this piece, they wanted to do exactly the opposite. Right. So in this piece, uh, the past is gone, so is in a bleak color, is transparent, mm -hmm. and then what we have to look forward to is the green and is the future. Right. But the system is exactly the same as is showing the time here. Ah. So it is exactly the same system. The capillary, which is actually hand molded. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done it myself when I went to visit HYT. Uh, they heat the glass and it's... Uh, heat, it's not hit. Heat, heat. Uh, with, yeah, with... Uh, warmth. Warmth. Okay, yeah, got yeah, it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they... Uh, and uh, well, I hit it as well yeah, because then course. trying to mold it, I you know I broke a couple. Uh -huh. So there is a lady that is doing that uh, by hand, mm -hmm. uh, using um, w using high temperatures, yeah. and then using a machine that can bend the capillary. So the skull was a very very ambitious project because the capillary had to be bent in the shape of a of a skull, yeah. which is of course a symbol a symbol of time, uh, the time passing. Yeah. No, that is fantastic. Well, who knows? Maybe in the future we can do a video just on this little guy itself. Absolutely. But uh, Absolutely. again, thanks very much for coming up to Scotland to see us and for bringing these wonderful pieces. If people want to find out more about limited edition and these watches, where can they check you out? Absolutely. So we have a website, thelimitededition.co.uk, and then on Instagram we have a fairly successful little account. We try to inspire people every day with content relating to independent watchmaking, which we are so passionate about because it's all about boundaries breaking and this is what we like. Yep, making new ground and traveling on it. Perfect. Well, thanks very much and be sure to check out more of our videos if you like what you see. We're going to have probably already on the channel a good number of videos basically like this, but of other pieces. So check them out and be sure to check out our website, scotchwatches.co.uk and our podcast, which is out twice a week. So thanks a lot for viewing and we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you, Rick. See you soon.